All right, today's something different. We get a chance to help out one of our viewers. This is Justin. He Surprisingly, he only lives about 40 minutes from us. And this is his 2000 International 4700 with a DT-466E and an Allison automatic transmission. Um, he watches our videos, has been for quite some time. And, you know, we he messaged me a couple times about some things and one thing led to another. He had a truck for sale, went and looked at it, and we got to talking and what he wanted to do with the truck, and it just really didn't suit him. And he ran across this truck, and this was an old ambulance, and what he'd like to do is use this as a camper and uh, tow his uh, race truck behind it. He builds uh, Cummins-powered drag trucks. So he's really big into that, and he loves that kind of stuff, so he'd like to take this truck and use it as his tow vehicle and have a camper. The problem was it was had a problem with the transmission, uh, the controller, push button wouldn't light up. He found that problem on his own. It was a real simple fix in the battery box, so that worked out well. But the brakes were a problem. There was uh, the driver's side front, driver's side rear were locked up, and they're in pretty rough shape. So he, he asked me if I'd be interested in doing the work. So we're putting new rotors, new calipers, new pads new seals and new hoses on all four corners um, you can see how hot this caliper was it uh, literally baked the piston um, it got pretty hot this is the left rear rotor you can see how bad that was it's a shame too because it looks like it was a fairly new rotor and this one is the driver's front and it had a horrible thumping as you can see you know it had been so hot that uh, it cracked and broke so I've got this side apart and that and we're gonna go ahead and flush the coolant new coolant filter air filter fuel filters change the oil grease it the kingpins are tight had some odd tire wear uh, might be a toe problem this is the inside edge of the tire. It's off just a little bit more than the outside edge, so she might be towed in a little bit. We're going to see about some shocks. They're leaking on the front. Uh, again, an oil change. Up here, everything's pretty tight. Drag link tie rods all look pretty good. So we got the back apart, and it's got uh, fairly new airbags. Uh, the rear shocks have been changed. They're not matching. I'm going to price them out and see if he wants to do them or not, but whatever. It is an air ride suspension, and it's got a broken parking brake cable up front. So, you know, I called our friends at uh, AMI, and uh, there are people we get our parts from, our international parts and some other parts, and they got us all set up on all, all the stuff we need. I'm going to have to add to it because we're going to replace these hoses as well. That hose right there, the line that goes from there to the hose that comes off the differential to the frame, eh... Not so great, we're gonna have to replace that too. And we gotta get the other side apart. All the bearings look good. It was in really nice shape. We are gonna replace all the seals, of course, and clean the hubs out. We're gonna flush the differential since we've already got it loose and already draining. And then we gotta do some work back here. I used to have this step here and we just took it off because that step doesn't have any value to him as much as having a receiver tube so the idea is we sat here and both looked at it and scratched our heads and thought about it and changed it 15 times of course we're going to run a straight plate in here we're going to cover all this up bring the receiver tube out the middle do some reinforcement underneath there and maybe we'll bring you along for that as well but we're going to have a receiver tube here we're going to cut these bumpers off create a new one and try and clean up the whole back of this and give it a much um, sleeker look for sure. I haven't got this side apart yet. I got the wheels off. Um, I'm working on that right now, but Justin was here uh, while I was doing this and he just left and he says, you know, I told him I wasn't, he told me feel free to video. Well, I wasn't going to, um, to uh, video this. And he said he doesn't mind. He'd actually kind of like me to. So I grabbed the camera and here we go. We're also gonna put six tires on it. These tires are all really old, really old, and they've got some dry rot down in the tread, as you can see here. You know, they got some separation. This one's got a really weird um, something going on here. You can see it right here. And as you go down the road, it really 
bounces pretty good. So we're going to take the wheels off. I'm going to see about getting the wheels all sandblasted and repainted. He'd like to have aluminum, but, you know, these these 1958 lugs are fairly costly in aluminum. But uh, anyways, we'll see what that is. So the next step for me is I need to get this apart, get the axle out, get the caliper off, and get this all apart. I've got jack stands under everything and some cribbing because uh, we got a lot of rain coming and it could shift one way or the other and we don't want it to fall so let me get this apart all right so i'm going to get moving on taking this apart and it's really pretty simple these internationals use the same caliper on all four corners so it's a very simple setup just a caliper slide bolt here caliper slide bolt down there um, take the bolts out take the brake the brake line loose caliper comes off and then the brake pads fall out to get the rotor off we need to take the hub loose so we have to take all these out this is a full floating axle we take these nuts loose pull, slide the axle out and there'll be a nut back here and uh, there'll be a washer retaining washer bends over we'll get all that out of the way slide this out and then we can take the hub off we'll bring you along once we get it apart all right as you see it's like every other full floater it's got the bend over tabs here and right here this side is a little different washer than the other side i think uh, maybe it's been replaced somewhere along the lines but uh it looks like somebody used the chisel method to tighten it up it's not how we'll be doing it but we get that tabs bent back over and we'll get that lock nut off all right so i got the nut out of there and there's the washer and this is why i like to replace these because sometimes they if somebody reuses them See how they crack. You get one of these to break off and get in your bearing, it'd be a very, very bad day. So we'll just go ahead and order up a couple new washers at the same time. Now we'll get to this nut. This nut is what sets the bearing preload. So once you set your bearing preload, you put that washer in there. That washer grabs on this nut so it can't move. And then you run the other nut, the jam nut, out on the outside torque, get the spec, and then bend them tabs over so the outside nut can't come loose. So it's a pretty pretty good system. It's worked pretty good for an awful long time, that's for sure. All right, caliper's off, brake pads are out. It's really a shame. The inside of this caliper, the pistons were sticking as well. Um, so that would be three of the wheels that were sticking. The only one that was free was the right front. Um, anyways, it's off, nuts out, ready to pull this bearing, and then pop the hub out of here. All right, so after the hub, is off just flip it upside down come in this side and there's six bolts in here take them six bolts off and the rotor will come right off of there bolts are out take the rotor off throw the pile the rest of them all right so the next step is we want to pop out this seal all right, so I put the hub upside down in one of the tires. So when you stick the studs down in there, it kind of holds it. So you can use a pry bar to pop the seal out. It doesn't want to pop out as much. And the studs are long enough that it'll let it cock a little bit, but it won't let it pop out. All right, that pops that out pretty easy. All the bearings look really good, and so did the races, but we'll clean it up and inspect them too. All right, so this is the brake line that goes from the hose coming from the frame to the differential, and this one goes over to the passenger side wheel, and this goes from that hose to the driver's side wheel, and man, I just barely touched that, and it broke. This one didn't look as bad, but we're here. It only makes good sense, so I'm going to use this NICAD, this nickel copper mix of brake line, um, especially on this one because this thing sits so low to the ground, everything tends to stay a little little damper underneath there when they sit so I'm gonna bend this all out I'm gonna use my tool right behind you that's made by master cool it's a hydraulic uh, flaring tool works ex extremely well so what I usually do is put the line in the bench vise and then I'll just bend this out I use this this bender just put the stuff in there and make my bends and match it this is pretty simple I just do that by hand this stuff bends real easy so let me get it done. 
All right, so we're doing a double flare. So we have to do the first step, which is create this part. We're gonna take the line from this to this. And that takes the first die. Slide this up this way. And close the hydraulic valve. Until it ends, take this out. Can you see in there? Can you see the what we've created? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we'll take this cone and we'll finish it off the rest of the way. When I screw this in. You got to make sure you get that cone right in the center. Sometimes that's a difference between a, a good flare and a bad one. Now. Nine times out of 10, you can get a really good flare with this tool, but I'm recording right now, so it probably won't happen. Pull this out. And just, uh, usually I just do this holding the tool, but since I want to show you, take these off. Well, pretty perfect. Got a little bit of a pinch right here, but that'll be okay. And then, if you look here, I remember to put my new ferrule on. My new nut, I mean. So then what I'll do, after, like I'll do the, the ones that are real tight, you need to flare them first. So then I'll stick this back in the vise and then match the bends. And just follow through. This thing works very well for this. <clears throat> Sometimes when you got a real tight one, I'll stick it right there. Cause this is a real tight bend is what I need. And then it just ever so easy. Makes a nice tight bend. All right, so we're finished on this one. So now we'll take this strap off and put on the new line. It's ready to go back on. All right, so there's the second one, and it's pretty tight and a real small piece, so I have to kind of put it in place and then bend it uh, before I put the other end in just to make sure I get it right. There's not a lot of room for error when you get in these real small lines. Very tight corridor in here. Very tight. This is what I was telling you about this one. This is the way it was bent before. There's just not a lot of room in here, so you have to kind of do the tight bends first and then do what you can. But we're all in, strapped in, and ready for the new hose. Picked up some of our parts. This is our parking brake cable here. These are the Performance Friction Company carbon metallic brake pads. Very impressive brake pads if you've never seen them. Started in NASCAR. That's where they originated. And now they're in the truck line. We got... Uh, front rotors, rear rotors, all of our calipers, and I went ahead and uh, got wheel seals for the rear, wheel seals for the front, axle seals, and got some more stuff on order. Waiting to hear from Justin on exactly how far we're going to go with some of the other stuff that I've noticed, so uh, we'll bring you along as we do, but right now what I'm going to do is clean up all the bearings, get the hubs ready, and put uh, the bearings back in them, put the seals on them, and put our new rotors on.
Okay. I was ready to go get him. All right, so here's a perfect example of why we need to take them off and clean them. You can see how that's humped up there. That's from rust getting between the two. And look how stuck that is. You can see all that rust that we shoved over there. So that can cause the, the brake pad to... This will rust jack between the two, squeeze it so the brake pad can't move. And the brakes will stay locked in. There we go. Okay, clean it up just like the rest. We got that hub painted, this hub painted, and then both the fronts. But I want them to dry real good and cure before we put them back together. So we're going to go ahead and dismount all six of these tires. All right, those are all dismounted, so I guess we'll get these up on the truck. We're going to take them and have them sandblasted and painted. All right, guys, so this is the end of part one. In part two, uh, we should be getting all of our parts together and starting to go back at, together. So look for that coming up soon. We're kind of in a hurry to get this one done, just like the other stuff. So we'll catch you on the next one.